Oh. Not gonna lie, I've kind of missed this. He's back. Christopher Eccleston is returning to the role of the ninth Doctor for the first time since the end of series one. Mwah. It's nice to have good news in 2020. Seriously. Now, a couple things to clarify for anyone who was not already aware of the news. This, at this point in time, is him returning to Big Finish. So this is audio adventures that we're talking about. That does not preclude him from ever taking on the role in a visual medium again. Some people are already throwing around the idea that maybe this means he'll be, you know, prepared to make an, a, some kind of appearance when we get to the 60th anniversary in a couple of years. But let, let's not jump the gun, all right? This alone, is a big deal. This alone is a big step. So let's let's not jumble our heads thinking about, oh, what else will this mean? Let's deal with what we've actually got for right now. Because what we've got is great. So if you are a bit like me, this might seem a little bit disappointing. Or if you're a bit like I was a few years ago before I started getting into Big Finish. Because there are plenty of Doctor Who fans who really only watch the show. And that's Totally valid. Honestly, most of the time, that's how I am. I don't get into ancillary materials in other mediums. You know, if something is a film or a TV series, I don't get into comic books and novels and all this other stuff. I just generally don't. The big exception that I do make at this point is Doctor Who Big Finish. And I think a lot of it has to do with the nature of the audio because it's not me reading, on a, you know, somebody writing these characters and I have to plug in, you know, my memory of how they would have delivered the lines. Or in the case of a comic, I'm not watching often photo reference and creating a weird Uncanny Valley effect, um, you know, recreations of these characters. That really throws me off when it comes to comics. But instead, I just get to hear it. And I can imagine what it looks like very easily if I get to hear that doctor deliver those lines. And if you're not into Big Finish, maybe this will be a leaping on point for you because I do need to do a video sort of like how to get into Big Finish at some point down the line. But this, I, like speaking as someone who has a hard time getting into expanded universe ancillary material, Big Finish is terrific and it's great for getting into. No matter what Doctor you like, if that Doctor has stories in Big Finish, they're probably going to be worth seeking out. I'm not going to say there's no duds, but these things are lovingly made, and when they fail, they rarely fail harshly. So, the pairing of Eccleston and Big Finish, this is, this is a big get. And while it may require some people to have to step out of their normal media comfort zone in order to get some more Eccleston. I think it's going to be a trip worth taking. There are a few things to keep in mind, though. The first is, he is not going to be appearing in The Time Lord Victorious, which is a big multi-platform story involving numerous doctors that I've talked about previously. He is not appearing as part of that. Now, the character of the Ninth Doctor is. That was confirmed some time ago. And I certainly had hoped that Eccleston would be involved in that. Um, but that is not going to be the case. So I've seen some people, like, get that mixed up. So be clear about that. The Ninth Doctor's part in that story is probably going to be either in novels or comics, or if he appears in audio, it's going to be with a sound alike, which they have done things along those lines before uh, for small-scale things with the Ninth Doctor in audio. But Eccleston himself will not take part in that. And I suspect that's largely a matter of timing, because we, we have a timeline on how this came together. I'll kind of come back to that and address that more specifically a little bit later, but... At the time that he started talking seriously with Big Finish about coming back, Time Lord, Time Lord Victorious would have already been probably well into production because, I mean, the time frame of how long it takes to produce a novel, a comic, audio adventures, etc., the time scale is different for each of those, but trying to coordinate all those together, that's a massive undertaking. And it, everything was probably already locked in 
by the time Eccleston started expressing an interest in getting involved and trying to slot him into a machine like that with so many moving parts, it probably was just never going to be reasonable. That doesn't mean Time Lord Victorious won't be good, doesn't mean it won't be worth looking into, but it does mean don't expect him there. Because what it has been said is that we are going to start getting audios of the Ninth Doctor in 2021. Actually, we have a specific release month. That is May of 2021, because Big Finish is taking pre-orders for the box sets, which brings me to another thing worth mentioning. Again, if you're not familiar with Big Finish, this is worth um, specifying as well. Big Finish has until recently come in a few different flavors. They started out with what was called the Monthly Range, a completely self-contained Doctor Who story released once a month with kind of a rotation of the various Doctors who they had access to, which initially was um, Peter Davison's Fifth Doctor, Colin Baker's Sixth Doctor, um, Sylvester McCoy's Seventh Doctor, and then not too much later, um, getting Paul McGann's Eighth Doctor in. They would later start doing box sets as well for various things. They would do box sets for spin-offs when they did things like the War Doctor, the War Master, Missy, River Song, and so forth. They've also done narrative box sets where it's a continuing story across multiple um, entries, and that's where you get things like Dark Eyes. Now, it was announced, I think, it was either earlier this year, I think, or, la or late last year, I think it was earlier this year, that Big Finish is going to be discontinuing the monthly range, and now it's only going to be the box sets, which... It's something I personally have mixed feelings about. I, At the end of the day, I prefer a really well-crafted, self-contained story more than something stretched out in segments over time. And even when I get box sets, it more often than not, it's the more self-contained stories within that box set that I tend to like more than the others. But that's a personal taste thing. What it does mean is that box sets tend to be a bit on the pricey side more often than not. And what we have announced is four box sets for Christopher Eccleston. Now, they're available for pre-order, and they've currently got them at 20 bucks a pop. That's cheap for their box sets, but it does mean you're going to drop 80 bucks for the whole thing. Now, they're right now labeling it as Ninth Doctor Adventures, which... This, this is going to be a bit of guesswork on my part. I would be inclined to say it probably means that there isn't going to be a continuous story across all the box sets. I only say that because generally when they've used the word adventures in box sets, they've been more self-contained, at least to within that box set. Like, so for instance, I have Fourth Doctor Adventures as a box set, and there are some stories within that box set that are completely self-contained, and but there is an overarching story running across it, but it is complete within that box set. So that's what I would expect, and I would be surprised if they're using that moniker if they do something more of a grand mini-series into a maxi-series like they did with the aforementioned Dark Eyes. I don't expect that that'll be the case. Now, I said I would come back to the time frame, and this, this was the part of this story that warmed my heart the most, and I do want to be sure to highlight this specifically. So when Big Finish made this announcement, their um, chairman, Jason Hay uh, Ellery, which I hope I didn't butcher that, but whatever, he said, quote, I first talked to Christopher about returning to the role of the doctor at the Gallifrey One convention in February this year. Christopher said he was enjoying meeting the fans and, and was pleased that his doctor was remembered so fondly. He indicated he would be open to discussing a project with Big Finish. That gave me so much joy because I was at Gallifrey One. I met Christopher Eccleston. He signed the picture that I had taken with him. I got to tell him myself what his doctor means to me. Now, I'm not going to say that I am personally responsible for him taking up the role again. That's for other people to say. But I am saying that I got to be there and feel the vibe and contribute to the amount of outpouring of love for his work and for what he did with the part. I was there on the last day of the convention when everyone that they were allowed to cram into the main hall got there and we all sang happy birthday to Christopher Eccleston because the last day of the convention was his birthday and he said with so much sincerity that this was his best birthday ever. 
the love was real. And I'm so glad that he felt that. Because I, I would imagine, given his complicated relationship historically with Doctor Who, given, you know, some of the clashes he had behind the scenes during his tenure there, and then, you know, sort of what we've learned more about where he was, um, you know, as a person and things he was dealing with at that point in time, which is also something I've talked about before, it's understandable that it was difficult for him to consider coming back to this role because it's a role that involved a lot of baggage for him. And I, I, it does seem very much, and I certainly would like to think that the fans making it unambiguous that we love what he did and we would love to see more of him helped alleviate whatever lingering doubts there might have been. Welcome back, Christopher. We are so happy you're here. And I don't know what you've got in store to us, but I do know one thing. It's going to be fantastic. What are your thoughts on this? Whatever they are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Usual stuff to do, you know what it is. Everyone does it. I have a Patreon. That was kind of important. It's what's currently covering my bills. And uh, in addition to that, I have merch and social media and a podcast and a bunch of other stuff. Links in the description. Check it out or don't. At the end of the day, you are the council. And I am just running the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned.